Hey guys, this is Shaw from worshipguitarskills.com and in this next series I'm going to show you how to play more melodically on the guitar, number one. I'm going to show you how you can work out lead lines and melodic lines from your favorite worship songs just by listening to them and knowing what the chords are. You can actually pick out what those notes are. And I'm also going to show you how you can start improvising freely on the guitar in a musical way. Now I know that one problem so many people face is they know the scales, they know what key the song is in, but they're playing the scale and that's all the music sounds like. It's sounding like scales and it doesn't have any um, musical or melodic content to it. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to fix that in this brand new series. It's gonna span across a range of different videos and remember you can download the backing tracks just by checking out the description box below and at the end I'll tell you how you can get access to some additional resources that will help you become a better lead guitarist. Now when it comes to playing melodically on the guitar and when it comes to coming up with your own hook lines or riffs or even working out the hook lines and riffs from your favorite worship songs, the one thing that you need to have a good understanding of is the difference between chord tones and non-chord tones. So what does that mean? Well, if I take an E chord like this, for example, it's been played across six strings. So how many notes would be in that E chord? Well, some people would say six notes. And while that technically might be true, there's actually far less than six notes. In fact, it's half of that, which is three notes. And let me show you why. This is an E note, a B note. We have an E note again, then a G sharp, a B, and an E. So as you can see, we have three E's, two B's, and one G sharp. And that is why that is a triad, all right? Because it only consists of three chord tones, or three notes that make up the chord, which is why we call them chord tones. Now, if you look at an E major scale, for example, how many notes are in that scale? Well, we've got seven notes, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and then back to E. Right, so that means if a song is in the key of E, we're gonna use the E major scale, all right, for our lead lines, but only three of those notes are chord tones and the other four notes are not chord tones in this instance because we're only playing a triad. Now that's very, very important. So what I wanna demonstrate for you here is I'm gonna play the G or the E major scale and I'm gonna play it over just a little uh, kind of a swell sound that I created here in the key of E. And I'm gonna play up and down the scale and on some notes you're gonna hear it sounds like home, all right? Like, okay, great, that's a note I can rest on. But some of the other notes, it might sound like, you know what, this is a bit uneasy. I probably need to resolve it, okay? And the level of tension that you're gonna notice in some of these notes, that'll be varying. There'll be some notes that'll just sound like, listen, that's uh, not gonna work. And other notes it might sound, well, that's not quite home, but it actually gives me an interesting sound. So there's like degrees of tension, because that's all that music is at the end of the day. It's tension and resolution. And the same if you watch a movie, there's tension and resolution. Without any tension, there can't be any resolution. And without those two things working in tandem together, there can be no, uh, the movie won't be interesting and the music will just be very flat. So here's my little looper. It's just ringing out an E chord. So if I play an E major scale like this, listen to this note. Okay, so in that case, I played a C sharp note. And I kind of wanted to go back to the B note, which is a chord tone, and then I played a D sharp. 
and I released that upwards to the E note. So there was just a very basic example of tension and release. Listen if I play the A note, that's not quite gonna work very well because it's the fourth and um, yeah, it just clashes a lot with that third unless you're playing a sus4. But listen to this for example. See, it sounds very rough, but if I go... So why did that sound better? Well, on the A, I played the A note, it gave me a lot of tension. And then I slide up to the B note, which is a chord tone. Or I went... To the G sharp, which is also a chord tone. All right, so that just example is supposed to show you the difference between tension and resolution. Now, whenever you play uh, music, you want to find ways to create some tension and then resolve that. So again, if I just play over the score, I'm going to mess around a little bit with the scale and I'm going to try and, you know, come up with some musical examples that is not just up and down a scale. It's kind of boring, right? But listen to this. Okay, so I'm literally messing around a little bit and throughout that I'm trying to come up with some melodic patterns. Now remember we said music is tension and resolution. Right there I only had one chord, the E chord, right? There was no, no other chords involved in that progression and therefore it's going to sound a little bit flat because there's no movement on a progression level, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trigger a progression here. Still in the key of E, the chords will be 4, 1, 5, 6. In other words, A, E, B, C sharp minor. And then over that, I'm going to do the same thing, which is just to kind of mess around again with the E major scale, but I'm going to make use of chord tones. And after that, our demonstrations will be over, and then we can dig into how do you actually find the chord tones and use that in your playing. Right, so that sounded a lot more interesting because now I was able to play over chords that you know had inherent tension and resolution and with my melodic lines I was able to focus a lot around chord tones. So the takeaway from this video is understanding that triads, your typical cowboy chords and most of the time the chords you'll play in a worship tune are made up of three notes which is why we call them triads. Those are chord tones and then I also have non-chord tones when I look at the rest of the notes within my scale. Now the non-chord tones will give me some tension and the way that I use them, I can then go ahead and resolve them by making use of chord tones. Now when you add a bunch of chords together, like this four, one, five, six progression that I've just played, then you can start coming up with some cool ideas. So that there is a quick primer on chord tones and how you want to use tension and resolution. Now, of course, it's literally the tip of the iceberg. And in the following videos, I'm going to show you exactly 
how you can start using these chord tones and how you can map them out on the guitar and start using them in a musical way. That's what we're gonna check out in the next video. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this video where we looked at ways in which you can play more melodically on the guitar by making use of your mental understanding, your oral ability by hearing music and melodic ideas, and then the physical ability of actually mapping out the notes on the guitar. Now, this is all just the start of a whole wonderful journey. And if you'd like to dig deeper and learn more about how you can com compose these different kinds of parts, as well as get access to the backing track that I used in this example, well, we've got a seven day worship guitar skills challenge, which you can sign up for for free. The link is in the description box. When you sign up for the seven day challenge, you will learn 15 different kinds of guitar parts making use of these chord tones in a musical and melodic fashion. And that's gonna help you really map out the notes on the guitar so you can play with more passion, power and precision, all those kind of good things that you hear all of your favorite guitarists do. So that's all covered in the seven day guitar challenge. You'll get tablature, you'll get a backing track, and you'll also get access to my personal email address. So if you've got any questions, you can just fire off an email and then I will go ahead and address that in future videos. All right, guys, been awesome hanging with you today. Make sure you sign up for the seven day guitar challenge so we can go ahead and dig deeper into this wonderful journey of becoming a better guitarist.